Hello buddy, Crow back again, and I wanted to do something that I really haven't done before. Uh, 2017's coming to a close, and there were actually a lot of games that came out in 2017 that I really enjoyed, and I thought it might be interesting to make a video kind of going through those games. Uh, so that's what this is. It's just going to be the games that I really enjoyed in 2017 that were actually released in 2017. So let's start it off with, uh, and, and the order I'm going to do this in is there my order from my least favorite to most favorite. This is in order of the game's release. So we'll start like earlier in the year and then get to more recent releases. All right, the first game on this list is gonna be Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, I think this will be on a lot of people's favorites for 2017. But uh, this, is, this came out in March, uh, was released along with the Switch. And what had happened was I had actually uh, pre-ordered a Switch I was looking at the release games. I didn't know what games to get. The thing is, though, is if it wasn't for the fact that there weren't a whole lot of games released for the Switch at launch, I might not have bought this. I might have bought something else. The thing is, though, is I haven't been a, a big Zelda fan since A Link to the Past. So when I was looking at games to buy for the Switch uh, to pre-order, so at least I had something to play when I got the Switch, I was like, oh, I'll get Breath of the Wild. Uh, little did I know that when I got the game, I would, I would keep playing it for like the next six weeks. This game really hooked me with, uh, you know, the physics, the exploration and everything. It was unlike any of the other uh, 3D Zelda games that I'd seen. So, you know, to me, this was just open world exploration. Do what you want. I really, really enjoyed this. I know uh, there are some people that enjoyed some of the other Zelda games more, but not me. I haven't really enjoyed a Zelda game uh, since Link to the Past, and this is just right up there. I haven't played any of the DLC yet, but maybe one day when there's a lull or in games for me to play, I will download that DLC and I'll try that out as well. All right, next up, also on the Switch, released a couple weeks after Breath of the Wild, uh, The Binding of Isaac After Birth Plus. This may be a bit of a cheat because this game actually did come out either the year before or something. This is an old, it's an old game and with ad added DLC or whatnot. But actually, this the Switch release, this is the first time this game has actually had a physical release. And I really do enjoy Binding of Isaac. I have it on my p uh, computer as well. And whenever I take my laptop out uh, somewhere to a friend's house or something like that, and they're sitting playing games and I'm not really doing anything, I might just pull out and play uh, The Binding of Isaac. And I really enjoyed the game. And I'm really glad this is on the Switch. It'll work great portably you're just running around dungeons it's, it's gr great replayability you never know what's going to happen it kind of reminds me a bit of smash tv and then you know you run through the mazes you don't know what you're going to run into you don't know what power-ups you're going to get you don't know if you're going to have an easy time you don't know if you're going to have a hard time uh, and it's just fun uh, playing it over and over again all right next up released in april we've got persona 5 now i haven't actually played a persona game since the very first persona on the PlayStation 1. And that's the only Persona game I play. I play that repeated, I played it a lot. I, at, for a time, I would have said it was my favorite RPG. I was seeing the reviews come out for Persona 5 and everybody seemed to be liking it. I'd see screenshots and I'd like, that looks really unique. And ultimately what really convinced me to buy it was the fact that I could get the Steelbook version on Amazon. So, <laughs> so I went ahead and I bought it. And because the one thing I really didn't know whether or not I'd like in the game is the fact that your actions take time and uh, the days go by and you have tasks you need to complete uh, by certain days. But honestly, that burden of the time limit rarely was felt in the game. I felt I had plenty of the time to do everything I wanted to. Uh, the, the soundtrack, the visuals, everything in the game was fantastic. And the story, as I'm playing the story, you know, uh, it, it just twists. And as you get closer and closer to the end of the game, just, you know, twists left and right. And you're like, oh, I can't believe that. And what was really odd is I had all these other games I wanted to play. But when I finished the game, I actually started playing it again. Now, I actually never played through the second playthrough. I just wanted to see, you know, what stuff carried over from game to game. Uh, and that's how that started. But then is, I just kept playing it and I just kept playing it. This is a great game. Now I hope they remake like some of the older games and put them like on the, the PS4 or something. Like could you imagine uh, like remastered uh, Persona 1 through 4, but for the PlayStation 4. But at the very least, I'm really considering getting the Persona 4 for the PS Vita. That uh, Persona 4 Golden for the PS Vita, that was recommended. And I'm really considering it. When I see it for a good price, I will buy that. 
All right, in late April, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was released, and I popped this in and I played it, and I, I played a lot. I really enjoyed it, uh, going online, playing against other people. And this one might be a bit of a cheat because uh, Mario Kart 8 was originally released on the Wii U. And in fact, I had bought it on the Wii U and I had actually gotten all the DLC for it, and I really enjoyed it there. But when I got it on the Switch, I, I was kind of reintroduced to how great that game is. And I was just stuck, you know, playing online again, again, and again for a while. Uh, really fun uh, kart racer. Mario Kart 8 is probably one of my favorites since uh, Mario Kart DS. This not only has what was included in the Wii U and the DLC, but there are a couple extra characters as well as a couple extra game modes. But uh, aside from that, I really just really enjoyed doing regular racing online with random strangers. It was really, this is a really fun game. And I, if you have a Switch, you really have to get Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. All right, next up might actually come as a bit of a surprise. This is actually a digital game uh, for the Android. I believe this is on the iOS device as well. But Arkanoid vs. Space Invaders came out of nowhere. Uh, I really haven't been big on mobile gaming at all, mainly because like 90% of those games are free to play, but you like have to pay microtransactions or watch ads or anything, and I just wasn't having any of it. I just wanted to be able to buy a game and play it on my phone without any interruptions, and that's exactly what Arkanoid vs. Space Invaders lets you do. It's about a $5 game, I believe. Uh, you download it, it doesn't bother you again about microtransactions or ads or anything. The game is yours, it's on your phone, and it is fun. If you like Arkanoid, you're gonna like this game because you basically use your finger to control uh, the Voss ship that you're controlling and you use the Space Invaders attacks against them. So they'll be shooting uh, their lasers at you and you reflect them back. And uh, you have different goals depending on what level you're playing. There's tons of level. I'm like level, I'm over a level 150 in the game, I think. And uh, there's no sign of it end, of ending. I have no idea what the end point of the game is. You have goals like either destroy all the bricks or destroy all the space invaders. Uh, you, you, when you get enough attack, you're able to uh, launch a ball at, and bounce it all over the place. There's tons of different characters unlocked and they all have different special abilities. So if you do get stuck on a level, you're like, well, maybe let me switch to a different character with different abilities. And uh, sure enough, you know, nine times out of 10, it's just that you were using a character that was inefficient at the level. Even though you are kind of invincible in the game, really your enemy is the time limit. It's really accomplishing the goals in the time uh, provided. This is a really excellent game. I usually play it during my lunch break at work. I don't know how well it would work on something like a tablet, but it's, it works really good on my phone. And I have to put it on my list of one of my favorite games of 2017. All right, next up, released in June, Wipeout Omega Collection. Now, I was really surprised when I heard this was coming out in the PS4, mainly because uh, these the, this is a uh, compilation of three other games kind of got jammed into one. Um, Wipeout uh, HD and Wipeout HD Fury were both on the PlayStation 3, and then Wipeout 2048, which was on the Vita. So they've updated the graphics, put them on the PS4. Uh, Great soundtrack. I'm a, I've been a really big fan of the Wipeout series since uh, the PlayStation 1, actually. The, the original Wipeout game was the first game I bought with my PlayStation, and I've been hooked on the series ever since. The only problem I have with this game is that they never released a soundtrack to go with it. I mean, there is a soundtrack, you can listen to it on Spotify, but they never released a physical CD of it. There's nowhere for me to download it anywhere. Uh, actually pay and download for it. I'm actually, you can listen to it on YouTube. Somebody's uploaded all the tracks. But like the soundtrack is one of the best things about this game. I mean, a lot of games in 2017 that I bought had soundtracks like, oh, you know, the, buy the game, you get the soundtrack with it. This could have used that. Uh, otherwise, this game is uh, fantastic. It's another, what I feel is a must have for the PlayStation 4. All right, released in the end of June was the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Now this was one of those ones I wasn't really sure if I wanted to buy or not. I had actually played the original uh, Crash Bandicoot way back when it really came out. I remember having fun, I remember playing that game all the way through. I don't remember playing 2 and I remember playing a little bit of 3. But somehow, I, in the back of my mind, I was like, you know, I'm going to buy it. Uh, this was back when you can um, Amazon Prime was giving out 20% on new games up until two weeks after the, its release. 
So it was maybe a week after release. I kept hearing people talking about how good this was. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll buy it, I'll get the 20% off. And sure enough, I got the game and it was just, you know, even though it was upgraded graphics and everything, it was just nostalgia for me. I mean, some of the levels are ridiculously hard, but you just keep playing it. You just want to keep playing it. You want to pass it. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. And it's another great uh, remaster of uh, classic games on the PlayStation 1. Now, I don't know if I would recommend this for everybody, but if you do like, you know, straight up platformers, uh, this might be a really good game to get, especially for a discounted price. All right, next up, this was released at the end of August. We've got Everybody's Golf. And by this point, this game is probably cheaper than it originally was when it came out. Now, I would recommend this game to almost anybody that has a passing interest in golf. It's really simple, uh, three buttons to click the, uh, your power meter and swing the ball. You go online, you go onto the golf course, you can drive around in your cart, you can look for hidden items, uh, they, and there's also fishing in the game. So there, you have this little fishing thing, but once you catch all the fish, there's really no purpose of, to it. But they're trying to add more stuff into the game other than just golfing. Now, I've been a big fan of the Hot Shots Golf Series um, well, kind of since Hot Shots Golf 3. I've played the first two, but it wasn't really until Hot Shots Golf 3 that I was really into Hot Shots Golf. And if you didn't know, Everybody's Golf is uh, just a rebranding of it, at least in the U.S. I've, it's always been called Everybody's Golf in Europe. But in the U.S., this used to be called Hot Shots Golf. They're kind of rebranding it to make it more in line, uh, more universal, uh, especially since I think a lot of people could play online. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I love the challenges in this. I loved uh, going online and running around with the other people on the course. Uh, the only downside is I don't have PS Plus, so I wasn't able to actually play against anybody because that requires PS Plus for some reason. But yeah, this, this gave me weeks and weeks and weeks of entertainment. And I'll probably keep going back to this from time to time because sometimes I just sit there and like, you know, I really want to play Hot Shots Golf. I mean, even on the Vita, Hot Shots Golf World Invitation, I would still go back and play that from time to time. And now we have a version of that on uh, the PS4. You know, one of the best things I like about this is that no longer do you select a character and just customize it, but you're customizing your character right from the beginning. That character is you, and that character levels up, and you're constantly leveling up. Everything levels up. It's, it's got a lot more RPG elements than the older versions do. The only downsides are that I feel like it could have used more courses. Um, I have a feeling they might come out with more courses. There already were more courses to purchase you know, as DLC but I feel like there could be more courses and I feel like there could be more caddies. The caddy selection is pretty abysmal I, and, they, and really most of them have no personality. And ironically, the one I like the most is the robot who by definition has no personality. <laughs> but yeah, this could use a little bit more content, but otherwise the way it is is good. I would recommend this. All right, next up is another digital game, and that's going to be Pinball FX3, which was released in the end of September. Uh, I've been enjoying P Pinball FX2 quite a lot. Uh, if you've watched my channel, you've known that I've done a video on every single Pinball FX2 table. Uh, Pinball FX3 came out with some added game modes, some, uh, some really upgraded visuals, and a lot of the tables from Pinball FX2 carried over as well. Not not all of them, but uh, I guess there were some licensing issues, but a lot of them did. And you could play the new game modes and everything with these ex pre-existing tables. Uh, when it was released, it was released with three new tables, like a Spielberg collection. So you had Jaws, E.T., and my personal favorite of the three, uh, the Back to the Future table. Uh, yeah, it's a fantastic game. If you like pinball, you got to check out Pinball FX3. All right, in mid-October. South Park, The Fractured Butthole was released, and I was actually looking forward to this. I enjoyed the Stick of Truth a lot, and I knew this was going to be very similar, maybe with a slightly different combat system, and I was right. I was not, I want to say I was not disappointed, but actually, even though I'm putting this in my favorites list, I was a little bit disappointed with this, because I don't feel that the story was as good as it was in the Stick of Truth, but that being said, I do think that the combat was better in this game, uh, it's just that the story kind of seemed to peter out in this one. Now, there is going to be some downloadable content. I did get the Steelbook version of this, which is, um, what, the Gold Edition. I just wanted the Steelbook, but it came with the Season Pass. So whenever things get released, I'll have to revisit this game and check it out. I did have a good time. 
The, the humor in this was top notch. I just don't feel like it pushed the boundaries as much as the first game did. Other than that, I still would recommend this game. Um, this does include, if you buy this new, you do get the Stick of Truth with it. So there's that too. So I would recommend it. All right, finally, last game I'm gonna talk about here, released near the end of October. How can I not put Super Mario Odyssey on this list? This game blew me away. I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I would like or not like about it. Uh, I, a lot of people say this is like Mario 64, but I would say it's more like Mario Galaxy. Uh, but yeah, it is like Mario 64. In fact, a lot of you could almost look at anything in this game and say, hey, that looks like from this Mario game, or that looks like that from that Mario game. There's the 2D sections where he's all sprite-based. The whole gimmick of this game is he's got the hat, and he throws the hat, and he possesses people with it. Uh, or he possesses certain enemies. You can't really possess everything in the game, but it, it adds an extra puzzle element to the game, and that is much appreciated. This goes about trying to say, well, how do I do this? How do I do that? And he was like, well, if I possess this guy, I could do this, uh, uh, that kind of thing. But this is a, a really good 3D platformer, as you would expect from Nintendo these days. Now, I wasn't the biggest fan of Super Mario 64, for I really wasn't into, uh, heavily into the 3D Mario games until Mario Galaxy. That's why I like saying this was like Mario Galaxy rather than Mario 64, because I enjoyed Mario Galaxy more than 64. But uh, but this one, this might be at the top of the list now for 3D Marios. Do I like this more than something like Mario 3 or Super Mario World? Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, or even Mario Maker, because you've got infinite levels like that. Basically, it's, this is the best 3D Mario game. All right, that's the list. Um, those are the games that I really, really got heavily into playing uh, this year. The games I really, really enjoyed. Uh, now again, there were some games that I may have bought uh, that I didn't really play it that much, that didn't really grab my attention at first. Um, you know, something like Horizon Zero Dawn, I bought that at Black Friday, but I really didn't get into it, at least not yet. Uh, Mario vs. Rabbids, I haven't played that as much as I would have liked. Um, and then there's certain games that I just haven't bought, so who knows, maybe in the future I'll buy the games of like, oh, I wish I would have bought that when it came out, that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to do for right now got one more video, one or possibly two more videos coming out before the end of the year. Until then, see you then. Bye.